Hello and welcome to Animal Watch and today we're bringing back extinct animals. I'm not lying, this is one of the most exciting announcements I've ever had to make on Animal Watch. We're totally on the verge of bringing back animals that lived on this planet thousands of years ago, including the mammoth, the dodo, the thylacine, but more importantly, restoring animals back to the planet that humans prematurely killed off, restoring nature and the ecosystem. Animal Watch is absolutely delighted to be supporting colossal biosciences and biorescue. And we are gonna be one of the first YouTube channels to bring you all the exciting news as it breaks. And today I'm absolutely stoked to let you know that we're going to actually be bringing back the Northern White Rhino. Yes, Ocean, it really is true. The Northern White Rhino is coming back. <laughs> Remember Naja and Fatu when I traveled to Africa five years ago? They were the only two remaining Northern White Rhinos on planet Earth and their future seemed bleak. But it's amazing. They are going to be saved from extinction and apparently there's going to be a calf by the year 2025. So welcome to Animal Watch De-Extinction, the Northern White Rhino episode. This is such an incredible episode and it's one of many de-extinction announcements that us here at Animal Watch are going to be bringing you, our viewers, over the next few years, including, I can't believe I'm even saying this now, the mammoth, the thylacine, the dodo. More about these species later on in the show. But first of all, how on earth are we going to save the northern white rhino from extinction? And what exactly is de-extinction. Well, in layman's terms, it's bringing back animals that once existed on this planet back to life, to live again. But on a more serious note, five years ago, I traveled to Old Pejeta in Africa to visit the last two remaining Northern White Rhinos on Earth. It was probably the saddest episode we've ever had to film here at Animal Watch. It was heartbreaking to put my hand out and touch these animals and to think that after those two are gone, then basically that's the end of the entire subspecies of rhino and they're not ever coming back. Let's take a look at that clip. It's a little bit sad because they are the only two left in the world. I think it's incredibly sad actually. Yeah. I don't even know how I feel right now. Yeah. I actually feel quite emotional. Fatu and Naja are the last two remaining northern white rhinos on Earth. They remain under 24 hours a day guard and protection at Old Pejeta Conservancy in Africa. They cannot reproduce as they are both female, but also one is too old and the other has a medical condition that prevents her from having or carrying babies. So how did it get to this? Well, us humans as usual. The northern white rhino once had a strong and vibrant population, but was decimated through hunting and poaching their rhino horns to sell on the black market. On top of this, humans have decimated their habitat as Africa undergoes a rapid human expansion never seen in years before. Human war also played a part by ravaging the areas they once lived. Sadly, it was left too late to breed the last few remaining, leaving just two females after the last male Sudan passed away. It looked extremely bleak, as us humans looked ashamedly at what we had done. This rhino subspecies had roamed Earth for thousands of years, and mankind had literally destroyed it in just a few. And it's not just the northern white rhino that's at risk of disappearing, did you know that Earth is now in its sixth mass extinction, where we will have lost 50% of all species on Earth? This is us humans at our worst. But all is not lost and it can be helped and slowed down. 
but how? Meet Colossal Biosciences and BioRescue, two groundbreaking organisations that have teamed up to save the Northern White Rhino and try and put right some of the horrors us humans have done. This week saw the exciting launch of the Colossal Foundation, a new not-for-profit foundation set at changing the face of the earth to heal and rebuild it again. Not only will this new foundation save countless species from extinction, but they are also set on returning extinct animals back to life in an attempt to help save the climate and the ecosystem. So how will we save the Northern White Rhino? Colossal creates technologies for extinct species restoration, critically endangered species protection, and the repopulation of critical ecosystems through cutting edge science and technologies. And BioRescue combines assisted reproduction technologies and stem cell associated techniques. So how on earth do you save a species that can't breed anymore? or even a species that is completely extinct. It sounds like Jurassic Park, doesn't it? But it's actually true and it's happening right now. So with the Northern White Rhino, they have plenty of eggs and semen stored away as these samples were extracted from male rhinos before they passed and eggs from the remaining females. BioRescue can create the embryos in their laboratories, but equally important is to engineer genetic diversity so the rhinos are not related in order to produce a healthy rhino population. To do this, Colossal have been collecting DNA from museum samples of northern white rhino specimens from the past, including bones, dry skin and preserved organs and fetuses, which can be used to extract this ancient DNA. By looking at these museum specimens of northern white rhinos, they can determine what genetic diversity was lost from the population. They then can use gene editing tools to reintroduce genetic diversity into the cells used to create embryos. So far, the partnership has created 30 viable embryos and they're confident that a newborn calf will be here by 2025. As Fatu and Naja cannot carry any of these embryos, Instead, a southern white rhino will be surrogate and carry the embryo to term and birth the new calf. The unbelievable ability to extract DNA from museum exhibits means that Colossal literally has got some colossal news coming our way. Not only are they saving the northern white rhino and other critically endangered rhino species, they are bringing back the mammoth, the thylacine and the dodo. I mean, you can't make it up, can you? It's unbelievable. Awesome news, isn't it? And I'll tell you why later on in the show, these animals are so critical to helping our climate to recover. But first of all, I'm really eager to find out what Colossal are doing to save our beloved Northern White Rhino. So I went to London to meet Matt James, who is Colossal's chief animal officer, who came to meet me and the Animal Watch viewers and tell us all about what they're doing. He has flown in from Dallas and will be able to explain in more detail the science behind the exciting announcement and how Colossal is combating various issues to help save the Northern White Rhino and other species around the world, both endangered and already extinct. I'm the Chief Animal Officer at Colossal Biosciences where I have the great privilege of uh, working with all the live animal care management and welfare as well as the wildlife conservation and reproductive science teams at Colossal. So Colossal is the world's first ever de-extinction company with, with this idea that we can use genetic engineering and advanced reproductive technologies to begin to restore species that have been lost to extinction back to Earth. Long ago when I started working in the zoology world I became really fascinated with rhinos and quickly one of the most iconic emerging extinctions of the world was the northern white rhino and understanding that plight. So when I joined Colossal we began looking at how we could use reproductive technologies, how we could use genetic engineering to help alter a species that were on the brink of extinction. And then we met up quickly with Thomas Hildebrandt from BioRescue who's working on the reproductive science that's making the de-extinction or the rescue of the northern white rhino possible today. So it's really difficult to make viable embryos from rhinos because they're one of the world's largest land animals. So as you might imagine, their anatomy is really difficult to access. 
One of the first steps in order to create the embryos is to be able to collect eggs from a live animal. And so we have to create really unique tools in order to be able to do that. And then all of the work that's used in in vitro fertilization, much like people, has to be figured out and understood in rhinos for the first time ever. Even though there are no male northern white rhinos left, what's really interesting is, first of all, there was some amazing planning done by the biorescue team and Kenya Wildlife Services, so they did bank semen from that last male, Sudan. But secondly, we can also use amazing tools like cloning, or what we call somatic cell nuclear transfer, which is we can collect eggs from the two remaining northern white rhino females, and we can actually take the nucleus out of that egg and put the nucleus of a northern white rhino in and then that fertilizes the embryo, which is then transferred back into the surrogate. So the way the surrogacy process works with southern white rhinos is that the embryo is 100% pure northern white rhino. The southern white rhino only acts as the gestational surrogate, so they're only carrying the embryo, but they contribute no DNA. So the animals that are born that result from this are 100% pure northern white rhino. So understanding that there's only two females left in their entire species, it's really important that we understand how can we use synthetic biology and other genetic engineering tools to help enhance the genetic diversity what remains. So we can actually use tools to identify very specific genes that would be responsible for adaptive qualities like disease resistance or size or reproductive viability. And we can use those to identify where in their limited diversity there are what we would call deleterious alleles. So that means a gene that's not conducive to adapting well. And we can replace that with the adaptive gene. What's really amazing is even though the northern white rhino never naturally ranged into Kenya, Kenya Wildlife Services has stepped up and Old Pejeta Conservancy has stepped up to be committed to the restoration of the species. So that first calf will be born in Old Pejeta in Kenya and will live and thrive there to help reestablish the northern white rhino population, understanding that their natural range states are not quite ready for their return. To estimate when we could have a healthy wild population is really challenging. Understanding Old Pejit is sort of a semi-wild situation, it's heavily managed. There's a lot of guards to protect against poaching. The poaching is really the biggest concern in Uganda and Central African Republic where the animals could be returned to the wild. So I know in the next decade we'll have a healthy population of northern white rhinos in Old Pejita, but there's a lot of issues we have to figure out in the society within Central Africa to allow for them to return to the wild. I really view the future of conservation as this mix of using de-extinction to restore species from extinction with the purpose of restoring functions in an ecosystem that have been degraded. You know, every time we lose a species to extinction, we sort of pull one piece of the Jenga puzzle out of that ecosystem and it loses stability. De-extinction gives us the ability to put that back and increase stability within the ecosystem. And then on the other side of the coin, we're using all the tools that we make to restore species from extinction in order to prevent extinctions as well. So what we're doing with northern white rhino is a great example of that. We just released a uh, vaccine to protect elephants from the elephant herpes virus. These are all tools that would not have been created if it were not for de-extinction, but they're also helping prevent future extinctions. I mean, we're really lucky. Colossal is sort of at the center of this emerging disruptive conservation idea using de-extinction to restore species from extinction. But we have amazing partners within our network, like BioRescue with the Northern White Rhino, partners like the organization Rewild, who are focused on how can we use rewilding techniques to preserve species and to protect ecosystems. When people really bring up this idea that once an animal's extinct, we should just let it be and it should be extinct, it's a little frustrating for me because I think it ignores the fact that in almost all cases, humans have led to their extinction. They have been the driving force behind their extinction. So with that great power to exterminate biodiversity, we also have an immense responsibility to restore it where we can. And synthetic biology, de-extinction, colossal, give us that ability to restore species from extinction. But we cannot ignore all the pressures that led the species to extinction first. So one of the things we do in parallel to all the amazing science is we work with local and indigenous tribes and peoples, we work with governments, we work in range states in order to help address basic conservation needs today so that we can prepare habitats, we can prepare people, and we can understand how we can most successfully return this species to the wild because without this collaborative network of partners that are working in the field right now to protect and restore ecosystems there will never be a place for a species that's been returned by de-extinction. I've got to say this exciting news had me in tears when they first told me what was happening. The thought of actually being able to fix some of the damage that mankind has done is unbelievable. Colossal's new foundation is destined to change the face of the earth as we know it now. 
by restoring extinct species back to life, strengthening the health of critically endangered species and repopulating critical ecosystems that support the continuation of life on Earth. Colossal is in fact accepting humanity's duty to restore Earth to a healthier state. As humans progress, yes, many do decimate the planet, but hopefully other humans can help fight against it with the new technologies and science that come with our advancement in order to fix some of the damage done. Here at Animal Watch, we're going to be keeping you, our viewers, up to date with the latest de-extinction as it happens with the woolly mammoth, with the thylacine, with the dodo. You are going to be one of the first viewers on YouTube to actually find out any of this information because of the support that we're giving to Colossal over the next few years. And if you think about it, it's only right that we fix the situation with the dodo and the thylacine because it was us humans that destroyed them in the first place. They would still be here today if we hadn't hunted them to extinction. The mammoth is being brought back as Colossal believes that he can help with the restoration of the climate. How on earth can he do that, I hear you cry? Well, through rewilding. The concept is simple. Return extinct animals to their original habitats so they can begin reversing the detrimental effects of climate change. In the case of the cold tolerant elephant mammoth hybrid specifically, rewilding equates to the reintroduction of a large cold tolerant mammal grazer to the tundra regions of the earth. By stirring up the ice locked surfaces of the landscape, stomping out thin, low oxygen trees and exposing healthy carbon trapping gases, Mammoth populations will begin immediately restoring the tundra's role as a climate protector and balancer of greenhouse gases. Combining the science of genetics with the business of discovery, we endeavour to jumpstart nature's ancestral heartbeat, to see the woolly mammoth thunder upon the tundra once again, and the thylacine to roam the forests of Tasmania, to advance the economies of biology and healing through genetics to make humanity more human and to reawaken the lost wilds of Earth so we and our planet can breathe easier. And if you want to find out more about Colossal and the wonderful work that they're doing, then pop over to www.colossal.com and you can find them on all the social media platforms too. And here's to hearing the thunder of thousands of northern white rhino feet across the plains of Africa again. I know I'd love to hear that, wouldn't you Ocean? That would be like one of the most amazing things and you know what, I think we're going to see it in our lifetime. So if you love this video and you love the idea of bringing all these animals back, then please give us a big like, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of these exciting de-extinction updates and be sure to share this video and tune in every week where we'd be bringing you more amazing episodes on dogs, wolves, animal rescue and conservation. And now, rewilding and de-extinction. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Say bye, Ocean. Bye-bye. I'm going to sleep, but bye-bye. Bye-bye.